Hello, I'm Bina and welcome to my life page. I'll be talking about teaching social studies. But before I go on to that, let me say something about myself. I've been teaching for the past 20 odd years. I've been teaching social studies. It was a part of my BA subject. I'm a commerce graduate with post-graduation in public administration. And social studies was one of my BA subjects. Yes, social studies as a subject um, may not be considered very important by many students, but I think it is very important. It's not. A, it's like general knowledge. It's about teaching about things that are around you, what you see around you, and if you're talking about geography, it is nothing but general knowledge. The various the weather changes that happen, the climate that's happening. There's a reason for everything that is happening around you, and if you're talking about history, history is nothing like but a story. It's a beautiful story about our past. And tell me which child does not like to hear, listen to stories. So history should be one of the most interesting topics. Uh, yet to become a social studies teacher, you need to have had social studies in your graduation or a post-graduation level. But then I, I am an exception. I have not had social studies as a grad, uh, in my graduation or my post-graduation level. Since I told you I am a commerce graduate and I have done masters in public administration. Yeah, public administration to some extent has to do about social studies. It has to do about administration in various countries. And then uh, most importantly, uh, apart from these um, degrees and certificates, I feel that you, one needs to be passionate about the subject. If you are passionate about your subject, social studies as a subject, I'm sure you'll be a very successful social studies teacher. And for social studies, like I told you, it's about uh, general knowledge, current affairs, what is happening. Extra reading, additional reading is very important. Like for example, when I was teaching Mughal history, I'd also read about the uh, book by uh, a famous author called The Twentieth Wife, which was about all about uh, the life and times of uh, Mehrunisa or Noor Jahan, which helped me uh, motivate my students in history lessons. Uh, and when you are well read, when you read, when you have additional reading, you have something to fall back on to make the class more interesting. And this additional reading can be um, communicated to your students and it makes it more interesting rather than sticking just to the textbook. Additional uh, knowledge or additional reading, additional information comes in handy. I told you social studies, this subject is something very tangible. It's not vague like uh, mathematics or something else. I'm not trying to belittle any subject. Every subject has its own importance. But in social studies, you just look around and you find a rock there, you find uh, stones there, or you find um, an iron uh, table or chair. You have a solution to everything. Where does this iron come from? You find, see somebody wearing gold ornaments. Where does this gold come from? It's all about, it is geography. Everything you get is from Mother Nature. And then you can start a big conversation about where does gold come, where does gold come from? Well, it is mined and there. Yeah, students these days, they give least importance to, importance to this subject, unfortunately. Um, all their ideas and all their uh, time is spent on learning the sciences and mathematics because most of the professional courses, the science and the math marks in your mathematics and science subjects are what is, um, what matter, and what you score, how much you scored in social studies has got no bearing in which college you seek admission to. So unfortunately, this subject is given least importance and hence you it's very difficult to motivate students to be interested in the subject. Deadlines, meeting deadlines, since the syllabus is vast in history, there are about 20, 30 topics and civics equally 20, 30 topics. Everything has to be covered within. The teacher, my day begins at 7.30 where we have, um, being a boarding school, we have our breakfast together with the children. That's a fun uh, uh, fun time that we spend. And then we are all into the classes where um, we talk about, if it is a rainy day, we talk about the weather, we discuss the weather. And then I relate it to my subject as to, do you know why it is raining now? And then the lesson begins. And as classes get over at 2 o'clock, ends with lunch again with the children. And after lunch, being a boarding school, we get the children where they stay on campus in hostels. We
we get to spend more time with them we this is when we ask them if they have gone on a vacation we even ask them where they went to and what uh, what unique um, if they notice something unique in that place and uh, we discuss and then again it is a fun way of learning and those who have missed classes or those who need additional help we give it to them after school hours two o'clock we sit with them and then give teach them on one-to-one -one level which helps in the long run with that i hope i've been able to give you a balanced view of teaching social studies the pros and the cons uh, before you make your choice thank you very much